Creating a family budget can be daunting at first. I promise it's easier than you think. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a budget and I'm gonna do a mock budget of a family of four who makes $5,000 a month. Let's do it. So first things first, what should you use when you're writing down your budget? You could simply just write out a budget on a piece of paper. You could also buy one on Amazon. Here's a couple different ones that I found that you could just use as a written out template for yourself. There's also free apps and apps for purchase. There's every dollar, there's mint. You could use an Excel budget spreadsheet, which is what I'm gonna show you today. Personally, I've used all of those options and I really do prefer it being on my computer and it just being easy to input. Before you sit down and start your very first budget, you're gonna need to go over your bank statement look at your credit cards if you have any, look at your checking account over this last month, and just a little side note, track every expense just for your own knowledge and see how you're doing and handling your money. Last year, I looked at all of my Amazon purchases and just wrote them all out for the year, and I was truly shocked at how much I spent on Amazon. It's nothing to be ashamed about. You can obviously have a list for coffee if you want to on your budget, but budgets give you permission to spend. They don't restrict you, so give yourself permission, put it in your budget, and just look over all of your expenses. Look at your bills, write down your bill name, write down the date, write down how much the cost is. You might be surprised at a few subscriptions that you didn't know existed. And once you have all of your information in front of you, you're ready to budget. All right, let's get started on the mock budget for mom and dad who take home $5,000 a month. That's after taxes and after health insurance. That is also the average dual income salary right now in America. So as you can see, this section here is all the income section. And so this will just help us to keep track of what mom and dad are making. And we have our date here. They both get paid on the first. That makes things super easy. We have dad's income, which dad makes $4,000 a month. And then we have mom's income. She works part-time and she runs an in-home daycare so she can stay home with her kids and she makes $1,000 a month. Just a little side note, if you're a mom and you wanna stay home, great way to make some extra income for your family. So there we have projected income. They already got paid. Dad got paid what he was supposed to and mom got paid what she was supposed to. Okay, moving on to inputting your monthly bills. And these are gonna be your fixed expenses, by the way. Things that don't really change, they're generally the same. It's not going to be a section for groceries or toiletries or that kind of thing. That will come later on. So the first bill that we have here is our tithe. And since mom and dad make $5,000 a month, they tithe $500 a month. It's really up to you if you're a Christian and you tithe, how much you tithe. Some say to tithe on your gross, some say to tithe on your net. Mom and dad tithe on their net because they just started tithing and they're just kind of getting their feet in the water trying to get used to the idea because it is a lot if you don't tithe and then you start doing it. Our next input is going to be our rent and mom and dad only have a $1,250 rent. They rent a two bedroom apartment. They have two kids and I know this rent is super low and you're thinking to yourself that is not realistic for most families. Okay. Most families, first of all, they don't, most families don't tithe. So if you are not planning to tithe or you're not a Christian, you don't tithe, then pretend that the tithe and the rent are both together. But I will say, even if you do tithe, your rent or your mortgage should be 25% of your take-home pay. And with a $5,000 income, they can only afford a $1,250 rent. And I know it's really hard to afford that, especially depending on the area, but I promise you can find something in an apartment. And it doesn't have to be that way forever. You can set goals for yourself. You can also increase your income. You can make up side hustles to reach your goals. There's a lot of things you can do to either get your income up or your expenses down so that you don't always have to stay in this little two bedroom apartment. All right, our next fixed bill is going to be our utilities. Mom and dad pay that on the third and they pay $200 for utilities. And thanks to the fact that they live in an apartment, they only pay water, sewer, and then gas and electric. And so they don't have to worry about garbage, which would be an extra expense if you had a mortgage. Next, they have their car insurance that comes out on the fourth and they pay 150 a month for that. They have two life insurance policies, which make sure you have term life insurance policies, especially when you're at a point in your life where you don't have a ton of net worth yet, which is okay but just make sure you have life insurance policies so that your family is taken care of if something happens. All right, they also have a phone bill. It comes out on the 15th and this phone bill is 150. They have a internet charge as well and that is $50. Those are their fixed monthly bill expenses and we've inputted it all in there. Now, here is the category that can get super, super funky sometimes. So we're gonna do our grocery section and we have monthly for groceries because this is how much we're spending monthly on groceries. And mom does a pretty good job. She only spends $200 a week on groceries. So that's awesome. That's around the average for grocery spending for a family of four. So she's doing a great job. Also for monthly, we are going to add in gas 
and they spend $200 a month on gas. We also have a monthly miscellaneous section where she would be buying paper towels, toilet paper, diapers. She buys her diapers at Aldi because she knows they're the cheapest and so she saves pretty good money there and she spends about $50 a week along with her $200 for groceries. That's around $250 a week for all of the household needs that she has. It would not be a good budget without a fun section, so we are going to add in $100 of fun. This would be ice cream dates with the kids or maybe a couple nights of takeout a month. And I will say with the fun section, even if you're trying to reach goals like paying off debt, I highly recommend still having one. I know if you go a little bit harder on your debt and some money philosophies, especially Dave Ramsey's money philosophy, he says, don't even go inside of a restaurant. I don't know that I 100% agree with that, especially as someone who has paid off a significant amount of debt already. I think it's fun to have at least $100 a month to go out and do some fun stuff. Okay, this is where mom and dad start to get into a little bit of trouble because they do have some debt. And so we're gonna input the debt section at the very bottom of this budget template. And they've got a credit card with a monthly minimum of $50. They also have, they ran into some hard times and they did pull out a personal loan and that is $100 a month. And then dad has a car loan and that one is $300 a month. So let's pretend that they spent it all just for the sake of seeing what this does to the budget. We input it all and sadly our margin definitely dropped down significantly. I think we have, let's see, $450 worth of debt payments. So we've got $920 left over. They are super, super close to that 20% of your take home pay being saved, but because they wanna pay off debt, they're gonna use all $920 to pay off debt and they're gonna try to do it as fast as possible. If I was in their situation, $920 would mean it would take quite a while to pay off their debt. Their debt totals around 30,000. And so I would definitely be either taking in more kids in the in-home daycare possibly for mom for a short season or maybe dad does uber eats at night and they just don't get to see each other as much they do it for a short season and it cuts that in about a year and then they are in a situation where they have a lot more margin and they can possibly afford to save up for a down payment and to start out on a nice starter home of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars which in their area gets them a decent amount remember that money management is 20 percent head knowledge and 80 percent behavior so when mom and dad are planning this budget if they're not actually sticking to it and keeping track of things and checking in with this budget at least once a week, they might get off track. And so that's why the budget's there. It gives you permission to spend, but it also keeps you accountable with you and your spouse. If you wanna see what our family is spending in a month currently right now with this crazy inflation at living in Knoxville, Tennessee, I just posted my November budget with me video so you can go look at our real numbers.